Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Zynet video module and I'm going to run through some of the, the, the most popular features and I'm going to show you um, all of the functionality that you have available to you. So here on my desktop you can see I've got a mounted server volume that's coming from the full press server and in there you can see I have lots of different folders but this folder here in particular is called TV Spots and in here I have lots of different video formats. Also, you may notice that one of the formats is Apple ProRes 422. So you are able to use Final Cut Pro and actually save the originating format back to the Zynet server. So Zynet will deal with ProRes 422 and 4444 formats. And it will be able to, you'll be able to save them on the Zynet server and Zynet will be able to process them and make them available in the web browser. Zynet can also deal with pretty much all of the other video formats you're going to come across, such as QuickTime. Uh, it can deal with Swift banner ads, AVIs, Flash, um, MOVs, MP4s, um, etc. So from the web browser, let's launch the web browser here. And I'm going to log in using the standard out-the-box exhibit style that comes with Zynet. And I'm going to log into the system with my username and password. And once I'm logged in, I'm going to navigate to that same video folder that we were just looking at. So here in the web browser, you can see that we are actually previewing all of the videos that are displayed here on the actual file server, but we're actually extracting previews from within the video. Now those previews are being extracted on scene detection, and you get to set the threshold of the scene detection. So that basically allows the user to be able to scroll through the video and, and actually physically see inside that video without having to play it or stream it. So that's a really good time saver and, and you can use that functionality to be able to see inside them. Just while we're here, we also have a Swift banner ad. Now, if you're a digital agency, um, you may create thousands of these banner ads every day. And the, the, the bad thing about them is that if you want people to see them, they need to open them up in Flash or some sort of player to be able to look at them. So the idea is you can literally store the Swift uh, banner ad onto the server, as I have done here. And if I hit now on stream, it will actually wrap a layer of HTML around that Swift banner ad, and it will actually render it and play it here in the web browser for me. So we can very quickly see what's inside that Swift banner ad. If we go back to the videos folder, we'll talk a little bit more about the actual videos themselves. So in here, I have lots of different video formats, um, and Zynet doesn't care about the size of the video. It will just automatically pull out the keyframes using the threshold settings that you've applied on the server. So this video here, for example, we can scroll through it, or I can literally click on the stream button, and that will stream the video right here in the browser, and it will start to play with the audio over the top. Now you'll also notice we have different options that we can stream this video at, different sizes, different resolutions for different devices. So you have the option to select that right here and it will change the display in the web browser for you. One of the other things I should point out is that the video engine inside Zynet also has the intelligence to detect what um, player the user is using at the back end. So if I'm on an iPad, it will deliver me QuickTime content. If I'm on a Windows machine, it will deliver me WMV format content and stream that down to my device. So it has um, a lot of intelligence built into the system. Okay, so some of the other things you can do with video. Um, if I actually click onto this video, it will take us into what we call the media viewer. And once we're in the media viewer, on the left-hand side, we're gonna have some options available to us. So on the right-hand side, these are all of the previews of the video that have been extracted. On the left, we can actually physically annotate on any of these previews that have been pulled um, from that video. So you can do some annotation work on the keyframes. The info button gives us all of the information about the video. So if the information's embedded in the video, this will be able to pull that information through automatically. So it's gonna tell us when it was last accessed, last modified. It tells us the, uh, the creator, um, it tells us all about the audio, the codec, the language, uh, the, the video frame rate, and the video uh, format. So all of that information is extracted automatically and displayed here, which can be really useful to people. One of the other options, and this is one of the main features, is this little tab here called Optional Videos. Now if I select this, 
This basically gives me a list of all of the different formats of this video that we can download. So for example, maybe I want um, a version for the iPad, I can select this option here, and you'll see that I have two options. I can download it, or I can stream it in an iPad, um, in an iPad format. So the good thing is, when you store the video onto the Zynet server over here, you can specify what formats you want to be created automatically. So just by placing this video into this folder, it's automatically created me three different MPEGs. It's created me an iPad version, and two iPhone versions for iPhone 3 and 4, a Windows version and a Flash version. And you get to specify what versions you want in different parts of the server. So this is configurable. Now the other great thing is, as soon as you place the video on the server, the database will go away and it will do all of the transcoding at the back end. So that means me as your user that's coming into the system, I don't have to wait for that video to be transcoded. So literally I can click on download right here and you'll see that that's now gonna download straight to my desktop in the format that I selected. And here it is on my desktop in that format. So really great way for you to save money and save time. You can allow Designer Engine to do all of the transcoding at the back end for you. Okay, so let's go back up. Just um, Actually, let's talk about a couple of the other features here. We have the frames area, and this is all of the frames that were extracted out of that video along with the time that they were extracted. So you can get um, very quick previews in here as well. You also have the option to select any of those frames as the default preview in the web browser, if you so wish to do that. Okay, so that's a little bit about um, some of the videos. Uh, let's go back one level here and talk a little bit more about some of the other functionality available to you. Okay, so you can see here we have a folder here called Websites, and if I go into that folder, you can see that we have two different folders. We have one called Competitor Websites and one called Tropics Mango Website. Let's take a look at that from the actual Finder. So let's close this down. There's the folder that we're looking at from the web browser, and there's our two other folders within that. Now competitor websites are actually just URLs or weblock files. So literally I could just grab a URL like this from a browser and you can see there it is on my desktop. If I place that onto the Zynet server and the server has access to the internet, it will use that URL to go away and take screen grabs of that web page. So let's go and take a look at that. You can see here I have lots of different websites. Um, I have one here for a company called Marks and & Spencers. And if I click on that, you'll see that just by using that URL, it has managed to go across the internet and pull out these previews for us. Now, not only has it pulled out the previews, but it also has, it knows that that has some changing um, content on that page. So this image here in the middle, you can see changes four times on a rollover. So if I go to the next frame, it actually took screen grabs of all of the content change in that website. So here's the next one with a different image, and you can see that in there. So that's one way of dealing with websites. It can actually use URLs or weblock files to go and grab previews for you automatically. Um, let's go back just one level here. And the other way, you can see here we have this other folder here called... Um, website and if we go in there you can see this is just a standard website with all of my um, all of my source files and my HTML pages inside so let's go and look at that from the web browser and in the web browser we can get a preview of all of the images that are attached to the actual HTML pages but we also get a preview of the HTML pages themselves so if I actually click into the HTML we will actually give you a preview inside the HTML page. And on the left-hand side, you can actually use the annotation tools directly on the HTML pages. You can basically also get to see all of the images that are linked to that particular web page that you're currently viewing. And you can get a big preview of those files. So here's a JPEG, and that's being used right here on the web page. So we've got the linked files. Um, metadata, and this applies to videos, this applies to absolutely anything on the file server. You can tag any of these assets with metadata, which makes them very easy to search and retrieve and find. Um, let's take a look at text content. This is actually on a HTML page. Design it server will extract all of the text content 
and make it searchable and also display it here on in this panel on the left hand side. So you can actually see all of the text inside the HTML page. Okay, we can also version all of these documents as well. I didn't talk about that, that's a different subject, but we can also version these HTML pages as well. So that's a little bit about HTML. Um, one of the other features I want to show you is the, um, the ability to be able to collect assets to a shopping cart and then be able to do uh, a show reel. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up here to my TV folder and I've got a lot of different uh, video formats here and I'm just going to add this video to the shopping cart. I'm also going to add, um, let's say, uh, this MP3 audio file to the shopping cart. Uh, I'm going to go across here to my sales folder and in here I have Word, Excel and PowerPoint documents. I'm going to add the PowerPoint slide deck. And in my brochures folder I have lots of different documents, I could add any of those, but I'm just going to add a static image to my shopping cart. So let's add this image right here. Okay, so I've added all of those different items to the shopping basket, and if I now click on the shopping basket, that shows me a preview of all of the assets that I just added to the basket. In the basket we have another option called Video Reel Generator, and if we select this, it allows us to go into another window where we can actually manipulate the content and have an output the way that we desire. So this is the video and I can select the keyframes or I can use a manual timeline to select the areas that I, that I require. Um, I'm going to just select some keyframes and then I'm going to add some space at the end of that video of maybe one second and I'm going to fade the last frame so that it goes into the next transition which is this PowerPoint deck. Now I could select the pages of the PowerPoint slide like this, or I can do it manually by maybe saying I want pages one and three, and I want them to be displayed for uh, one second each. Then maybe I need this PSD, this image, and I want that to be displayed for two seconds, but I don't like the order of this, I want the image to be displayed first. So if I drag and drop that at the top, we can reorder the, the way that this is going to be created. Now down the bottom, we can give it an output name, so I'm gonna say demo, and we can give it a height and a width, and we can give it the quality. So I'm just gonna say low quality just for demo purposes, and I'm gonna select my output format. I'm gonna say that I want this as a quick time, I can select fresh or Windows. Um, and we also added some audio to the shopping basket. So with this option here, I can replace any existing audio that might exist in these files, I'm going to use the audio that I've selected here, this MP3 player, and I'm going to loop that across all of these assets along the top here. Now I'm going to click on Start Generation, and what's going to happen, the server's now going to go away and combine all those elements together and give me an output. This can be used in several different ways. One example might be if you're doing a pitch to a client, the account manager can do self-service and create these show reels themselves. Another area might be if you have a retail client or you are a retailer, people can come in here, maybe they'll select the TV commercial that's currently running uh, on the TV at the moment. They might select some of the, the models wearing some of the clothes that are being displayed in your store. You create a video and then you can deliver that content straight to an individual store where they can stream this directly to one of their digital displays. So there's a couple of different uh, uses for this type of functionality. So I'm going to go ahead and click on download and that's now downloaded that to my desktop and you can see there's the video and if we open that up that should now play and stream in our web in our on, on my desktop machine you can see here's the video it's then going to fade out of that and take us into our slide decks and I've done this at low resolution so the quality is not fantastic but you get the general idea you can create a nice show reel here now I'm going to return to browse and I'm going to show you something else that happened when we created that video show reel. So up here in my approval center I asked the server to automatically keep a version of that uh, video that was created on my server. And you can see that the server has already extracted out all of the keyframes for that video. And if we click into that video you'll also see that we already have our optional videos so I can download this in any of the other formats that I select here. And one of the other things it allows us to do is click on linked files 
and actually it will show us all of the files that are linked to this actual um, video that we just created. So maybe you will want to go and check the copyright, for example. So some really nice functionality in there. Uh, there's a lot more to the video engine, um, and I can happily show you more. Um, if you would like a more in-depth demo, then please contact us at sales at IO Integration, and we can arrange that for you. Thank you.